Welcome to video number 6 for chapter 1, Numerical Computation. In this video, we'll talk about um, finite difference to compute approximations to derivatives of functions. So given a function f of x, and we want to compute its derivative at certain values of x. So we need a number um, h, um, which is usually referred to as the grid size. So h is a positive value, but it's sufficiently small. And we have um, three ways of approximating f of x. So let's look at all those three different methods first. And the first method is called um, forward Euler. So it approximates the derivative of f at x with this expression. So you evaluate the f at x plus h. So you go a little bit to the right, evaluate the function, and minus the function value there, and then divide it by the step you take. That's the forward, the name forward, and coming from the fact that you take a step forward to gather your information. And of course, it's due to Euler. And the second method in very much is similar in spirit to the first one, except that now um, I'm gathering information backward. So I take the function f and subtract its value evaluated at x minus h, so to the left, a little bit smaller values of x, and then the difference is divided by h. So that's the backward Euler. And finally, there is a version that is using information from both sides. So you take the value at x plus h a little bit to the right, and then you take the value at x minus h a little bit to the left, and then you look at the difference between these two function values and divide it by 2h. So you see this is used to find the approximation of x, where x lies in the middle between x plus h and x minus h. So um, this is called a central finite difference. And then there is a way of um, approximating second derivatives, so f double prime at x, and there is a central finite difference version of it. So this is evaluated as following f, of f at x plus h minus 2fx plus f at x minus h, and the whole expression is divided by h squared. Now um, we'll take a look at a geometric interpretation of the three methods that we listed here for the first derivative. Okay, assuming we have a function f, let's say it's some kind of a convex function, and x is here, and I'm trying to compute the derivative of this function right here. So we know the derivative of a function, it's actually the, um, if you draw a tangent line, touches the graph right at that point, then the slope of this tangent line is the derivative. Now let's take a look at what the forward Euler does. So the forward Euler takes a step forward, so x plus h, and then finds the function value here, and then it takes this point and this point and connects a secant line. So a secant line going through these two points and it computes its slope and say that the slope of this secant line is an approximation to the slope of this tangent line. And you will see that this would work well if h is small, right? If this point moves closer and closer, this point here, if it shall move closer and closer to x, you know, that's how derivative is defined. In the limit, this becomes the derivative. So for small h, it's a good approximation. And now the backward Euler is the same thing, except that now we take a step back, we go to x minus h, and let's say it's here, and we find the function value here, and then we connect these two points into a secant line. So this is the secant line, and this, the slope of this line here is being used to approximate the derivative, which is the slope of this tangent line. So again, if h is small and this point moves closer to x, and then these two slopes will be very close to each other. 
So we draw this graph with a rather big H. It's just to illustrate idea. So if H is very small and they are very close to each other, I will not be able to draw and you won't be able to see the difference. And now, um, what is the, the last method, the central final difference? Well, it uses information from both sides, right? So you take a step forward, x plus h, you take a point here, and then you take a step backward, x minus h, and take the point here, and you connect these two points, you get a secant line, this is line number 3, and then you say the slope of this line is a good approximation to the slope of that tangent line. So looking at this graph that I draw here, you see that, um, at least in this case, for the forward Euler, we are getting some value that's bigger than the exact value. And for the backward Euler, this line 2 here, we're getting some slope that's a bit smaller than the exact value we want to find. And at least in this example, we see that actually by doing a central final difference, this line number 3 here looks like it's closest to the tangent line in the slope. So um, the observation is kind of a hinting to us that probably the central final difference approximation here is better than the forward and the backward Euler method. So it would be nice to have some analysis done that would confirm this observation. And this is what we're going to do now. So we want to look at arrow. So the term for the arrow analysis we'll do here is called local truncation arrow. So um, let's say we have tail expansion for the function. Now we'll write it in this special way. So we we'll write tail expansion for the function f of x plus h, and we expand it about x. Okay, so this is just the standard Taylor expansion, but I rewrite it into this form. So in the standard version, you will change the c into x, and you will change the x into x plus h. And this is what you will get if you do that. So, um, the x here minus the c, which would occur here, now becomes x plus h minus x, which is h. Okay, so this is all in powers of h, which means how far away you're evaluating your function at the point, how far away that point is from the point you expand it. Okay, so this is um, what we have, and then we can write it into a partial sum to the turn n, plus the arrow, and then the arrow function here can be rewritten into the notation we have here, so using the h. So it will be summing up infinitely many terms here, starting from the n plus 1 term, and it's dominated by the n plus 1 term. So this exactly equals to this expression, the n plus 1 term, where you substitute the x here into some cosi, what is the cosi? Cosi is some value between x and x plus h. So in this expression here, we see that this quantity is given once the function is given. At least we have a bound on it. And this is just a number. So what's important is actually this term, where h is up to you to choose. It's the how far away you are um, and going away from x, so how far away is your um, finite difference computing the derivative, right? So um, you can choose to take h small, so you're evaluating this at a point very close to x. So this is something you can choose. So we'll use this notation. So we'll write this expression as this fancy O of h to the power n plus 1. It says that this value here is bounded by some constant, we have here some constant c times h to the power. So if you write o to the h to the 4, so what does that mean? That means this is a quantity bounded by some constant c times h to the 4, where c is bounded constant and c does not depend on h. h is here your critical parameter. Okay, so let's do this analysis of local truncation error. So, using 
that form of Taylor series, I can write out f at x plus h, expand it at x, it takes in this form, I'm just expanding it into all the terms, all the term to h to the 3, so I lump everything behind into an order of h to the 4. And then f at x minus h is the same as the previous one where you just substitute h with negative h. So you will get alternating sign. This becomes negative and this becomes negative. And then we lump everything here, all the higher order terms, order from h to the 4 and higher into something of order h to the 4th. Okay, so let's look at forward Euler. What does it do? So forward Euler is f at x plus h minus fx divided by h. And we put in the expression of the Taylor series here as what we have here. And then if we do this one, subtract f of x, so this term will be gone. And, uh, okay, let's mess up here. So this term will be gone. And then you have the rest divided, all the rest here will be divided by h. So what does it mean? Which means all these h will have to reduce the power by 1. Is that right? So that's what we wrote here. So it's f prime of x plus, now it's half of h, f double prime. And all the rest, of these are at least of power h squared. So we just write it of order h squared. Okay, so actually we see now the leading arrow term is here. So this is the leading arrow term, and it's of order h, in particular of order h to the 1, right? So what is important is the exponent here. So this 1 here is actually very important because, you know, now this is the arrow. Imagine if, if, if it's h to the power 1, h is very small, say 10 to the negative 3, and then your arrow is of the magnitude 10 to the negative 3. And then if this order shall be 2, you have h squared, then your arrow will be 10 to the negative 6. It's a dramatic change. So this number 1 is very important, and actually that number gives you the order of your method. So we say this is a first order method. Well, you can do a very similar computation for the backward Euler method by um, plugging the Taylor series here into this expression, and then you see in fx will cancel that, and then the rest will be all changed sign into positive. So this will be positive, and this will be negative, and this will be positive, and then the whole thing is divided by h, so I'll get rid of h, and then h get rid of the power, and this becomes power 2, right? So if you write it out, you have this expression, f of x, which you get, and then you have negative a half h, f double prime, and plus everything else is at least of h square, high order. So you see now, this is your leading arrow term, and it dominates so you can write, this is f prime of x plus something of order h to the power 1. So you see the exponent is important, and so this 1 actually gives me the order. So this is a first order method. Well, you can perform a very, very similar computation for the central finest difference, where um, you would just plug in the tail expansion for fx plus h and f minus h and do some algebraic manipulation, which I'll skip the details, so you please take a piece of paper and work this out and see if you get the same thing. So, and this is what you will get, and then that is the leading arrow term, right, as we talked about. So this is the important term, the leading term. So that, in the end, gives you the order. So this order here, the exponent is h squared, so I get a second order method, okay? And the central difference scheme for the second derivative is totally similar. You can plug in, again, you can plug in the Taylor expansion for fx plus h, f minus h, and do algebraic manipulation, and this is what you will get. And then the leading arrow term here gives you the order of the method, so it's h squared, and this gives you a second order method. Now, of course, um, there are other finite different methods that you can use, say, for example, to approximate the first derivative. So we have seen forward Euler, backward 
Euler and central final difference. And you can design other final difference, maybe using more than two points or using three points or four points to achieve higher order. So um, we'll have probably problems in that spirit um, in the homework for you to play with. And the way to find the local truncation arrow is totally similar as the way we did here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.